In order to get started on a code base, my favorite thing to do is to just build a base layer. A base layer essentially provides all of the things that uh, glue together the rest of the pieces of the code base. So everything else will have a dependency on this base layer. There are a couple of uh, strict rules to how I define what can and can't go into a base. So if it requires calling to an operating system or anything else that has to be uh, linked in separately, if it can't just be compiled out of uh, you know, straight C code or C++ style code um, into instructions, then it's not really base stuff. The only exception is that I do rely on the C runtime library at least as long as I haven't ported off of it just to get a few uh, things up and running. The ideal would be even to get off of that, but you know, in the interest of pragmatic uh, decision-making, it makes a little bit of sense to use the C runtime library to get up and running and not get bogged down in, in that particular dependency. So when I'm building something like this, uh, there's a few things, you know, anytime I'm working on a, a section of a code base that I like to think through, some considerations that I like to keep in mind while I'm working on that section. So for the base of a code base, for instance, I'm not going to be overly picky about testing because I'm not building extremely uh, large amounts of code that'll never get used. What I'm actually building is stuff that's going to get used all the time and bugs will come up pretty easily. Um, over the course of it getting used. So it's going to get pretty thoroughly tested by its usage in all the other parts of the code. Uh, I'll do a little bit of testing to make sure everything builds as I'm going and to make sure that like, you know, sanity testing a few things uh, so that I actually know I've done the full job and haven't just completely skipped out on doing the basic concepts that I'm actually trying to do. But I'm not going to be very rigorous about testing on this particular section. Uh, and I also wanted to make a note about, since this is the very beginning of the code base, the selection of uh, language, I'm going to write this in C++, and I'm going to keep it a very minimal style of C++. So it's going to use almost nothing that you couldn't use in C, but it will probably rely on operator overloading. Uh, it'll occasionally use a constructor destruct deconstructor pair, and it's... Uh, it might rely on function overloading in a few cases, although I generally tend to avoid that. Uh, so those are a few things that will that will not be C in this code. But for the most part, it's going to be a very uh, straightforward C-like code base. My plan today is to start by just writing those compiler context things. And what I mean by compiler context things is I want to do, uh, I want to be able to tell what operating system, and what compiler, what architecture, all those kinds of things are happening in the context statically when a compilation happens. So I want to be able to have macros like is Windows, is Linux, something like that. Uh, so I'm going to pull up a website that I tend to go to for this. Okay, so this is the one I was looking for. It's pretty nice. It has, um, if you come here, uh, you can click on different sections and get lots of details about where different macros are defined in different ways. So uh, for instance, the first thing I'll do is I wanna be able to figure out which compiler I'm on. And the two compiler or three compilers I'm interested in are a Visual Studio. So I want to be able to check these macros to see if I'm in Visual Studio. Clang. So I'm going to check if this macro is present. And uh, GCC. So that's the plan. Uh, I'm going to get started on writing that. And we'll take a look at how it turns out when it's ready.
Okay, so that's a pretty good start with the context stuff. There's obviously lots more you could add, uh, but I don't want to spend all day adding in things that I don't know I'm going to use. I might not ever use even some of this, like ARM, ARM64, Mac. I, I don't know if I'll ever do that. I don't know if I'll use GCC either. Uh, but I just like to have a couple of examples of what I what what it would look like if I had a few of each type of thing. That way I you know, have proved out the pattern uh, of how to define these things. Uh, a couple quick notes here. So I made some notes of the things I couldn't quite figure out just from looking at the documentation. These are things I put in a to-do list on a notebook as well, and I've written down the to-dos here. So maybe we want to switch to Clang real quick and see if we can test out uh, that the context stuff works there. But unfortunately, all the stuff that I don't actually know about are for, con uh, for architectures that I'm not entirely sure how to build yet. We'll need to do more work to make sure we can actually build these things this way. And I'll need to do a little bit of digging around to find the answer for how to detect ARM64 and Visual Studio if that compiler even supports that architecture, right? But um, hopefully the art structure of this makes good sense. I'm starting by figuring out which compiler I'm in because which compiler you're in can determine what macros determine everything else. So rather than having like some complicated series of ORs that determine whether or not I'm on Windows for different... Um, uh, you know, well, I guess Windows is the same everywhere, but like, you know, if the architecture macros are going to change from one compiler to the next, I might as well figure out which Mac compiler I'm on first so that I know how the macros behave. Um, the other thing is rather than at each stage, you know, defining one of these as one, the rest is zero. I like to have the separate section where I just fill in the defaults to zero. It just makes the cracking code up here much less, you know, fat. Uh, so those are my those are my uh, tips on how to set up the context cracking. I think this went pretty well. Let's let's try the clang real quick, and then I'll put it on the to do list uh, for somewhere in this module to go back and clean up these to dos. Okay, so I did find a little issue when I looked at that. Uh, as you can see, if I am compiling right now, I have the CL compiler running and it just works. So Clang is not defined in this case, but look what happens if I switch to compiling with Clang. So we get that error over there that says both. And uh, that means that it, it is confirming that the Clang macro is indeed defined. But if I take this one out, then it ends up saying that CL is the compiler. As you can see there, so that, that macro path is happening. So I guess when Clang is being used on Windows, it's probably trying to emulate the Microsoft macros as well, just to make the headers and stuff work, which makes sense. So to get this to do what we actually want to do, we're going to have to switch the order and put Clang first. Okay, so there's actually a second issue. I had to fix both and I didn't catch the, the second issue. But the second issue here is just that Clang doesn't output to the same executable format that Windows or CL does. So to fix that, I had to change the options between CL and Clang, which makes perfect sense. Uh, one other cleanup I should probably do is uh, to move that output name for CL out of the main line and put it into the options line like this. So there we go. I think that this is a pretty good start to the base module. Uh, we'll get into some more serious stuff next time.